As part of our ongoing, never-ending quest to find the few people in this country who are still willing to say what they actually think out loud, we wound up in Los Angeles recently with the rapper Ice Cube driving through his old neighborhood. Didn't expect that to happen. Here's how it went. Dr. Dre came by this house. I'm going to show you. We're going to ride by. He used to live down the street from me. His cousin, his cousin moved on our block when I was 12. He was 11. And his name is Sir Jinx. He became one of my producers when I went solo. Sir Jinx. He moved on the block, and then Dr. Dre was his cousin. So Dre came by a couple of times. It was cool, you know, to be able to see somebody who was actually making making records. Yeah. And we were still amateurs. Okay, not at this street, but the next one, make a left. You want to get out there? Or you want yeah, we're not getting out because I don't want my pops to be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> All these people coming by my house. You didn't tell me. Oh, your dad still lives there? Yeah. Yeah, my pop still lives here. How long has your family been there? Man, since 1962. These boys, they all grew up on this block, okay? That's my son. That's my son. Famously, it's one of the tougher neighborhoods in the city. So where are we? we right now, we're in Manchester. This right here, that's a few family members. Out of all the kids I grew up with, at least 13 of them are dead. And that's before they even reach 21. You know, I'm, I just turned 21, so, you know, I, I thank God that I've even reached 21. Just the block I grew up on, right here. Yeah, Does this look the same? It, it pretty much looked the same. Uh, you know, but it used to be, like, more trees. Like, every, every house had a tree in front of it, and... Uh, at some point, the city started cutting cutting the trees out. They said that the helicopters couldn't see people, so they start. What the police helicopters? Yeah, so they could they start cutting the trees out. Three decades and billions of dollars later, it's still a tough place. How do you think politicians in Los Angeles have done running the city? It's pretty much the same people running it the same way. Politicians only really pay attention to the people that give them money. Everybody else is kind of an extra in their movie. We love you in the scene, but we could do the scene without you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> um, do you ever give money to politicians? No. Why? I don't believe in politicians. Politicians have hidden, hidden agendas. They owe a lot of people a lot of favors. The more money you give them, the more you're, you're listened to. So you've never fallen for a politician? Um, I can't say that. You know, I've had hope and, you know, dreams that, you know, this guy is going to be the guy. What did you think of Obama when he got elected? You know, for the first time, I felt proud that America took that step. Yep. I, I didn't think that would ever do that. And so that was a moment in time. Um... But then, you know, you look around, years go by, and, you know, not much, not much change uh, for people I know, people I care about. We've had six major race riots on the president's watch. Race relations have plummeted to lows not seen since the Rocky King. In Chicago, a toddler is now the latest victim of the city's deadly surge in gun violence. But it didn't change with Bush, it didn't change with Clinton, it didn't change with uh, other Bush, or Reagan, um, or Carter. It, it's so, you know, at the end of the day, it's still the same results. So you're describing a symbolic victory? Yes, in a lot of ways, yes. And then came George Floyd in the beginning of what we were told was a second civil rights movement. If there was going to be liberation in the wake of the Floyd riots, this is where you'd see the effects. Three years ago, a bunch of big companies put hundreds of millions of dollars into Black Lives Matter. Threw them a lot of money. Did that improve the neighborhood you grew up in? Whenever you do that, most of the time, it's a lot of people siphoning that money off the top. Yeah. And and the kicker is a lot of people say they're going to give the money, but 
they don't even give the money. They make the pledge and never write the check? Yeah, they just get the article wrote. Everybody think they're great. And they never, they never even give the money. <laughs> Big three. These days, Ice Cube is in the sports business. He and a partner started a new professional basketball league called Big Three. Strangely, this is one form of black empowerment that the NBA doesn't seem to like. It does seem like the Big Three, I'm not pitching your business, but it, it does seem like you, the idea behind it would be consistent with what the NBA says they're about. Without a doubt, you know, the NBA is full of great slogans and they, you know, they write Black Lives Matter on the court and they do all those things, but pretty full of shit when it's, when the rubber meets the road, you know? Maybe that's why they put the slogans on the court, so they won't have to do anything. Just a yeah. thought, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's as easy as saying, we're gonna donate a hundred million dollars to it. You know, it's like an easy thing to do. All they gotta do is call up the graphics guy and, <laughs> and approve the comp. So you're starting to make me think this could be a scam. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just saying it's easy for them to put that on the court. It takes a little more effort to really care to, to work with a, a league like the Big Three. You know, you really gotta wanna make a difference. The NBA is run by a cringing neoliberal called Adam Silver. Quote, we're completely committed to standing for social justice and racial equality, Silver once announced. It's part of the DNA of this league. And yet, according to Ice Cube, Adam Silver has done his best to strangle the black-owned Big Three in its crib. When people think basketball, they think Silver, don't you think? Adam Silver, he kind of embodies the spirit of basketball. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Was he a, what team did he play on uh, during his career? I think he played on the New York Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Starting forward on the New York Lawyers. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he rode the bench. Come on, man. <laughs> rode the pine. Waterboy. You can see why Ice Cube is considered one of the least obedient entertainers in L.A. It's a trip. I used to walk these streets and well, that's look at you. all the stars. You on the bus? Yeah, this was a trip. Should we see get out all these stars? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Unless they're gonna give us a little money from the hood tour, life tours. You know what I mean? Break us off twenty percent, man. <laughs> the world's most dangerous group. Yes. So I noticed this about every year or two, I read some story about you and the subtext is always the same, which is, you know, stay in your lane. I wouldn't be here if I stayed in my lane. I just never wanted to have that life. You know, I never wanted to be controlled. How, how many times have you been pulled aside by people who are trying to control you? What they, what they usually do is go talk to people that's in, you know, my circle. Yeah. And try to get them to conv try to convince them that they need to convince me that I need to take a different position. Um, so that's kind of how I get. On um, what topics? Um, you know, it's been on, you know, the vaccine. The Hollywood Reporter says actor Ice Cube is saying no to a nine million dollar payday because he won't say yes to the COVID vaccine. The actor and rapper was set to co-star in a new comedy, Oh Hell No, alongside Jack Black. But when producers requested all cast members get a COVID vaccine, Ice Cube backed out. Why wouldn't you take the vax? Um, you, you had a direct order to take it. You were told to take it. Yeah, I, I'm not real good with direct orders, but on a whole nother note, <laughs> no, no, no. I, but it was a command. I didn't. I mean, they told. I'm sorry. They told you. I mean, they couldn't have been clearer about yeah, it. Yeah, it was pretty clear. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you take it? Of course not. Yeah, no. It, it wasn't ready. You know, it. It was. It was six month. You know, kind of rush job, and and I didn't feel safe. But they told you you were safe. I know what they said. <laughs> I know what they said. And I heard them. I heard them loud and clear. 
but it's it's not their decision. There's no repercussions if they're wrong, but I get all the repercussions if they're wrong. Was, was it a tough call for you? No, it wasn't a tough call. You know, I wanted it to be an example for my kids, you know, really make sure they didn't take it either. Show them that I, you know, I wanted to stand on my convictions and that I was willing, you know, to lose $9 million and more because we've probably lost more, you know, since then. The idea is that people who stand on their convictions are heroes. They're brave. They have principles. You know, they're the people we look to for inspiration. But in this case, with this decision and these principles, you were not hailed as a hero. No. You were attacked. So why won't you get the vaccine, man? Hey, look, man, I'd just rather be myself then take that vaccine like you other three billion bozos. <laughs> I never told anyone not to get vaccinated publicly. That was never my message to the world. I didn't even want people to know whether I got vaccinated or not. I was pretty upset that that even came out because you know, I was just gonna quietly, you know, just not take it and deal with the consequences as they came. Do you know anyone who was injured by the vaccine? I do. And they suffer every day. And it's, it's hard to watch. Suffering in silence is not the answer all the time. You know, sometimes you gotta let people know what's going on so you can actually move the needle. Choose to be vocal. If it's true, why can't I say it? <laughs> well, you can't say it because it is true. <laughs> there it is. Now, that's the problem with the world today. That, There's no penalty for lying. No one's ever punished for lying. It's only telling the truth. It gets you in trouble. Ain't that something? That's true. Yeah, that is so true. Thinking something is not a crime. Saying it is not a crime. You know what I mean? So I just tell what's real. You know, if, if the truth hurts, say ouch. <laughs>